So what are you going to need to shoot a wedding? So this is my complete kit. And I'm gonna talk you through what I use personally, why I use it, because I've now kind of got my kit down to an art. And this has taken several years to work out what I really need, what is essential, what's not essential, what's a nice to have, and also backup options. And the best tip I can give you as a wedding photographer is to be prepared for every eventuality because stuff does happen, stuff breaks. Things happen, you have got to be prepared because this is gonna happen once. A wedding day, you do not get a do-over. You've got to be prepared and couples are trusting you to be professional, to have everything and to be ready um, for everything, even things you might have considered. Um, and this is what I have personally in my kit. Now, this is what I use. Every photographer is different, but I shoot prime lenses and I'll tell you why. So what do I shoot? I shoot with Sony A7 III and I shoot two bodies. And this is an absolute must have, having two camera bodies. Now you can use any brand you like. Sony, Nikon and Canon are typically the most popular brands for cameras. So it's completely up to you what your personal preference is, but it is absolutely vital that you have two bodies. I would never ever shoot a wedding without two bodies. If you can't afford a second body, just hire one or borrow one from a friend. My first ever wedding, I was paid hundred pounds because I was just wanted it for kind of experience and just to do it. I couldn't afford a second camera. I had another job. So I borrowed a second camera from a friend. So I had that backup. I had that kind of security because you only get to do this once. You're not going to get a do over. That confetti moment isn't going to happen again. The vows are not going to get a do over. You have to get it right. And you'd be amazed how cameras do seize up, how the shutter might just stop working. It might refuse to shut on. If it's a really, really hot day, it might overheat and just stop working. And you cannot be like, oh, sorry guys, my camera's not working. The couple will not understand that and they are not forgiving. They're paying you as a professional photographer to be professional, to be prepared for all eventualities. Second tip as well, and this is actually quite common. Whenever you are shooting a wedding, it is vital that you shoot to two memory card slots. So any good kind of mirrorless camera or DSLR will have dual memory card slots. Again, I would never shoot a wedding without recording the images to two memory cards. And how that works is dual card slots will record all your images and just copy it to a second card. And again, you should set your cameras up. So for me, with my Sony, it won't let me shoot anything unless there's two cards in. And again, it is there as a security backup. It has happened, I have had a card just corrupt, but luckily I had a second card recording all the same images. So again, as a wedding photographer, you have got to record dual card slots. Very, very important, so make sure you do that. Lenses. I am a prime girl. This is a personal preference. I do not shoot zoom lenses. Now, some people do, some people don't. I don't. For lots of reasons, my style is romantic, dreamy, whimsical, editorial, and for me, you don't achieve that look through zoom lenses. You just don't. They're really convenient, but as a wedding portrait photographer, prime lenses are the way forward for that. And they're a lot lighter, and you just get some beautiful, beautiful results. And I'll be honest, on a wedding day, I only shoot with two lenses. And that's the absolute truth. So on a wedding day, I only actually shoot 35 1.4 and 85 1.4. So if you were to say, okay, I can only afford two lenses, what should I get? These two. 35 1.4 is pretty much most wedding photographers go to lens. It is incredibly versatile. You can use this for pretty much, I'm gonna say 80% of the day. It is a must have lens, it's beautiful and I shoot Sigma. So yes, I shoot Sony, but all my lenses are exclusively Sigma. Again, Sigma, I've always shot Sigma art because you just have that kind of dreamy, arty look. I do have a 24 1.4 and that is just for wide shots. And I pretty much only use this if I'm in bridal prep and it's really, really tight and I can't really move and it's a very small room or I have large group shots with loads of people in a space and I will bring it out for that. However, I didn't really have that until this year and that's the absolute truth. So it's not a must have, 
If not, you just step back a bit further with your 35 and you'll be fine. 50, 1.4, again, this is just a nice to have lens. I tend to use this for kind of fashion or portraits, but I don't really bring this out on a wedding day. But it's nice to have, but if you can only afford two lenses, 85 and 35 are the go-to lenses and I carry those on both of me all day. So harness, so I use a harness for all my weddings. This is by Desired Leather. I will put in the course notes. There is a discount code you can get as well, so you get discounts. A really good thing as well is you can actually brand your logo on this. And this is a top marketing tip because no one really carries business cards anymore. But this is a walking, talking business card and people go, oh yeah, I saw you at so-and-so's wedding because your name's there um, and people love it. And people always comment on this at weddings. Super, super handy and it has little buckles on. So I've got antibacterial and I have a little pouch for extra batteries so I can change them on the go. And that will just distribute the weight um, on the wedding day because you can't be having straps around your neck and that will just make your life a lot easier. Desired leather I've actually used now um, before I was an ambassador uh, for about four years and they're brilliant. Really, really affordable, gorgeous, loads of different colours, highly recommend them. Memory cards, so memory card cases are really, really important. Top tip is put your address on it so if you do lose it, hopefully someone will return it to you and just get more memory cards than you think is what I'd say. And I tend to flip them over if I've if they've been used. Other things in my kit, batteries. It's a really good idea to organize your batteries. So I have two different cases, one for batteries that are full, one for batteries that are empty. So at the end of a wedding, I know which ones I need to charge, which ones I can use again. Especially if you're doing double or triple weddings, you are really, really organized. And with batteries, you wanna keep them on you on a bun bag. So bun bag again, I have this on me all day. And in here, I carry spare batteries, memory card, my phone and plasters and a sewing kit for the wedding party. And that is a must have because you cannot leave a wedding to be like, oh, I need more batteries and go back to your bag. You don't have time for that. You have got to be ready to go. And weddings are very much fast paced days. So having a bum bag, that one's from eBay. I used to use a Peak Design one, but that's my newest one. And I really like it. Other things, flash, I have two. Uh, and I use Godox, um, again, Amazon, super easy, just turn them on, they work, you have two. Again, have a backup in case one doesn't work. Battery chargers, I've got the Harnell Cube, this is my main one, and then I have a backup one because it's good to have two. So I have one charging permanently in my desk at home and then an extra one to pack in my bag that stays in my bag permanently on a wedding day. Again, it's good to have backups of stuff you really, really need. And a battery charger is one of those because if your battery charger stopped working and you needed to charge your batteries, you gotta be prepared. Speaker, so I do play music for photo shoots, engagement shoots, occasional wedding sessions. If it's appropriate, I will have music and this will transform a photo session. And this is a Wonder Boom one, it's quite big. And I just hook it onto my bum bag and have that playing um, as well. Straps, I do have an additional Peak Design one. And this is if I change from two bodies to one camera at the end of the night for the evening dancing. And that just clips on. So you're not wasting time threading, putting on a body. That's the one I love and trust. Now this is my go-to wedding kit. So this is something you should really add to your wedding kit. And this is also a selling point to couples on their wedding day. So as a wedding photographer, you will come across situations that are pretty normal, but the, the wedding party wouldn't kind of be aware of or consider or be ready. So this is a, my emergency kit. So deodorant, little mini one, little kind of travel size one is really handy. You might smell, a bridal party might be like, oh, I smell the bride. That does come out more than you think. Hey, fever tablets. If you're shooting in a field or somewhere that's really dusty, Painkillers, you'd be amazed how many brides and grooms are in pain and they're just, they're freaking out and they're not having a good time. Obviously say, oh, I do have painkillers, but is that your own, you know, responsibility? But that is a good thing to have, you'd be amazed. Plasters, an absolute ton of plasters, blister plasters, because bridesmaids and brides and grooms always have new shoes and they're in agony and that will actually affect photo experience so again be prepared and if someone goes oh my feet are hurt and go that's fine I've got a plaster again it's all about kind of adding value to their day and making sure they're having a great time and they're always going to say to you oh you've, you've been amazing you're so helpful sewing kit in a mixture of popular colors 
um, and you'd be amazed how many wedding dresses and bridesmaid dresses you will sew in your career. So learn how to thread a needle and thread and how the kit is sewing a little mini scissors as well. And tampons, again, for obvious reasons, even if you are a male photographer, I do actually recommend having these in your kit. And you probably think, but why? Why not? Um, again, I have had weddings when people suddenly, it does happen on the wedding day and you get to say, okay, I've got something. And again, it might be somewhere completely remote where they don't have that luxury to go out. And it's just about going that extra mile and an array of safety pins, large ones, small ones, because stuff does break and you need a quick fix and maybe you don't have time to sew a dress. They're going down the aisle and you can just safety pin and a hair tie and that is in my emergency kit I use for every single wedding the odds are you're going to use a plaster or something another thing to consider for your kit as well is air tags so I invested in a bunch of these this year and I just kind of hide these in my kit bags because you never know your stuff might get stolen but the good thing with an air tag is you know where it is so for me I have them for my wallet my kit bag and various precious items I have air tags attached to so I can actually see where my things are and that's meant to consider as well and they actually are also tax deductible because it is technically security and kind of protecting your gear laptop so Apple Mac or iMac card reader and hard drives so for me I do now take my laptop to weddings to back up images on a wedding day and I take I have various hard drives but I do have a smaller one for weddings on the go so that we're not taking out my major hard drive to weddings I'm just kind of transferring those rules so they're backed up and then I can transfer them to the main one when I get home a little flat lay kit of ribbons and kind of little stamps and so forth and that's if you have weddings that are more of a luxe nature that you'll be doing stationary flat lays so there you have it that is what is in my wedding kit now it will take a while to build your wedding kit but just think about the essential items you know your camera bodies your lenses your straps batteries memory cards flash guns chargers those are what you need straight away naturally other things like ribbons hair tags um, will kind of come with time but this is what i'd recommend to have in your kit to be prepared um, and this is what i shoot for weddings so not tons and tons of gear and i tend to carry most of this physically on me as well and that's the benefit of having a bum bag and having a harness so it's on me at all times. So if my battery does die, I can just pop out another one and pop it in. So I'm constantly on the go, constantly moving and not missing a moment because I can't keep running back to my bag. Do not feel the pressure to buy the best gear, the latest equipment. There's very much a saying, all the gear, no idea. Don't be that person, master the kit you have and know it and use it and master it so you are confident with it. And if you are going to get new equipment or thinking about it, hire it. There are loads of different camera companies where you can actually hire equipment. So for me, I hired the Sony before I actually invested in it. And you can always start by buying secondhand equipment, secondhand lenses from trusted suppliers to build out your kit. And that way you can really kind of start building it. And then over time, you'll figure out what works for you. So for me, I now know that I solely shoot prime lenses and that's what works for me. So there you have it. That is my entire kit. In the course notes, I will link what each, every single specific item is and where you can buy them from. Um, and I hope that helps.